Nationwide Arena is the site for this year's Women's Final Four, and it's the site of a top 10 matchup in our countdown to Columbus, fifth rank Ohio State, ninth rank Louisville. Adam Amin, Kara Lawson, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe. Tell me about Kelsey Mitchell, Kara. Oh, I don't think there's a player in the country with more pressure on her shoulders than this young lady right here. Three-time returning All-American. Guess where the Final Four is this season? In Columbus, the home city for The Ohio State University. Explosive score, both in transition and in the half court. A ton of fun to watch. Really good duo for Louisville to keep an eye on today. For the Louisville Cardinal, you've got inside and outside with Asia Durham, Aisha Hines, Allen, both had quiet performances in their first game. We'll need to be big here today. Louisville with a win over Southeast Missouri the other day. Ohio State knocked off Stanford on Friday here in Columbus. Tip one by Stephanie Mavunga, a 6'3 senior, and here comes Ohio State to start this game. Here is Kelsey Mitchell, senior out of Cincinnati. He's got Erica Carter guarding her to start this game. Sierra Calhoun knocks down two. Coming off a 15-point opener against Stanford. Well, that's a great sign for Ohio State. You'll see the four out, one in for Ohio State a ton. And Calhoun getting off early is something that's really important for the balance of this Ohio State offense. Lene Parker picks up the first foul. Jeff Walls and Kevin McGuff, two very close friends. They've known each other for a long time, coaching against each other. For the first time in this matchup. Louisville will continue to look inside when they can to Heinz Allen being guarded by much shorter Lene Harper. Harper's at 5'8, Heinz Allen at 6'2. Two time Big Ten Player of the Year, a three time All American, Kelsey Mitchell. And she'll get tagged with an offensive foul. Really nice job defensively by Sam Fearing to get out there, understand that Kelsey Mitchell goes full speed, especially when she's headed to her left side. That's her strong hand. There is Carter. Ohio State moving well defensively. Doss in and out on the three. Here's Asia Durr, preseason ACC Player of the Year. 119 three pointers a season to go really dynamic score. It's the pace we expected, right, Kara? I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of times where either bench is going to be counting down the last 10 <laughs> seconds of the shot clock so that their team is aware to shoot. Both these teams like to go up and down. We'll take threes early in transition offense. And have left-handed guards that oppose each other that can really, really light it up. Parker fouled on her drive. Will be Asian Durr picking up her first two minutes in. Good atmosphere for this one as well. It's only about a three hour drive from Louisville to Columbus. Home fans have filled in nicely as this afternoon is worn on. Sam Curing is going to pick up her first. Well, Rebecca, much like you talked about the potential advantage for Louisville with Lene Harper guarding their post player. Lene Harper on the flip side now on the offensive end has that advantage with what she, what she just did, utilizing her quickness, facing up that post defender that's guarding her and trying to get to the basket, and there she draws a foul. We have a team with a four guard lineup and then a team with two traditional posts. It's fun to watch how each team can take advantage of that on each end of the floor. 
Harper, the Big Ten Sixth Player of the Year last year, now in the starting rotation. Over Kentucky Wildcat puts Ohio State up 3 0. Here's that post entry for Hines Allen, but could not connect with Furing. The right idea by Furing to, to cut there, just Hines Allen threw it behind her instead of leading her to the basket. Good post to post pass. <laughs> I was she waiting for it. I was waiting for it. I knew you were going to notice it. Come on. Would have gone have uh, completed that one? <laughs> no. Would have tried it. <laughs> Erica Carter, aggressive. And it's cleared by Asia Doss. Deep three, Mitchell. Jasmine Jones had a 12-point game in the opener. She comes back. Louisville empty on its first five trips down the floor. Open look, Asia Dern. Got it. Not going to miss too many of those. That one was on target, in rhythm. Asia Durr is just a terrific three-point shooter. We saw it a season ago for the smooth, smooth-looking shot. Asia's hit a three in 41 straight games. That's the second longest streak in the country behind Kelsey Mitchell, who's hit a three in 58 straight games. Pull up, Durr. Got them all. Gives Louisville its first lead. Ohio State so good off the bounce, dribble penetration. Louisville in his zone right now, but you know Jeff Wallace, he will be mixing up defenses throughout the course of the game. Aisha Hines, Allen, no. Fury, yes. Ohio State. And again, nice defense by Sam Furing. Not just yep. time, just moving her feet, staying between Mavunga and the baskets. The second time she's gotten a charge called against Ohio State. We welcome you to Nationwide Arena in Columbus, Ohio. In 138 days, this will be the site of the women's Final Four. And we've got a Final Four caliber matchup. Top 10 teams, ninth ranked Louisville, fifth ranked Ohio State. Adam Amin, Kara Lawson, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe, and her fantastic crew here. The back end of a top 10 doubleheader. Here an eight to five lead for the Louisville Cardinals, beating the Ohio State Buckeyes for just the second time. Both teams won their opener. Lene Harper knocks down a three, and we are tied up at eight apiece past the halfway point of the first. What have you guys seen so far? This has definitely been the tempo that both teams want to play. They're going to get out and transition, look for threes. Asia Durr has been able to hit a couple of them. Lene Harper there, but this is an evenly even matchup with these two teams. You know, I, I think your, your eyes immediately have to go to Kelsey Mitchell for Ohio State and Asia Durr, who's got the basketball right now for Louisville. These are two of the elite scorers in the country. That's Asia Durr's third three already here in the first six minutes of the game. Both of these young women can go on the offensive end. It is difficult to, to corral them for the full 40 minutes. Two explosive scores, two excellent three-point shooters. Mitchell that time sets up Asia Doss for a three. So what do you see from Ohio State offensively? Louisville's in the gaps off of Kelsey Mitchell. And so they're allowing that one pass away and a clean look. We see Harper hit it the possession before, and now Doss gets in the action. That's a good sign for the Buckeyes. Gotta be one step closer to Mitchell because she's so explosive off, off the bounce. 
Sam Furing hits the fourth Louisville three of this game. Mitchell sets up Calhoun. Cleared by Maisha Hines Allen. Durr, just a little bit of space, and she is on fire to start this one tonight. Four from downtown for Asia Durr. Stephanie Mavunga coming off a record setting performance against Stanford has her first two of the night. Jeff Walls was saying yesterday that he wants Asia Durr to have that killer mentality to come out, look for hers, look to score. <laughs> well, she's done that so far in this you first think? quarter. He's got Doss on her. Great ball movement. Furing just left it a little bit short. Mitchell. Last touch by Mavunga. A red hot start, and it's Asia Durr getting it going. I'll take this one time, two times, three times, <laughs> four times. Give me all of these. Asia Durr on fire. For the first time this season, Columbus, Ohio will be the site of the women's Final Four in 138 days. And we've got a great start to the season. Adam Amin, Carol Lawson, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe as well. And a great guard matchup in this one. It's showing up early. Well, I love Kelsey Mitchell, and I don't think there's any more pressure, or there's more pressure on her than any other player in the country with the Final Four being here. And this is her senior campaign in Columbus. And then you have another great guard on the other side for Louisville. To the junior, Asia Durr has been outstanding early, already made four threes, 12 points their first game a couple nights ago she had eight points the entire game she got 12 here in the first five minutes a preseason ACC player of the year preseason Big Ten player of the year and Holly their relationship goes back even deeper than just this game well, that's right. They were both invited to be part of the Team USA this summer. They had a fall camp in Santa Barbara with the senior national team. They also won a U23 gold in J Tokyo, and they said, we just bonded together. It was like scores looking at other scores, like, I understand you and your mentality. They hang out together. They're friends together. And I asked each, how do you stop the other? They said, you really can't. <laughs> That's how I feel about sitting next to these two. I just can't, I just can't stop them, so I don't try. There's no need in containing these two. Good freshman and Dana Evans finding Jasmine Jones for two. Eight point lead for Louisville, its largest. And Mitchell has yet to score in this game. Nice knock away by Evans, but she stepped on the sideline. You can already see the pace that she brings, right? Yep. I mean, coming in off the bench, pushing the basketball, Louisville runs at a little bit faster clip, and then defensively being able to have someone that can do that, change the game defensively at the point of attack. Dana Evans is only going to get better and better. You mentioned Kelsey Mitchell not having any points. Already a three assist, though. So, I mean, she draws so much attention. If you're a shooter, you want to be around a player like that who's willing to pass and get you open looks. She averaged four assists per game last year, already with three in this game. She's got Maisha Hines Allen momentarily guarding her, but again, Jeff Walls changes up defenses. He goes matchups. So she'll see multiple players on her in this game. That one was from Akron. Deep for Asia Doss, her second three. Well, Jeff Walls could do nothing but smile and point and wink at her, too. I mean, that was deep. It's not the normal shot chart for Doss, although she, she can knock down a three-point <laughs> shot. It's usually not that deep. Here's Durr. 
That's her first miss from the outside. And Mitchell has such good pace. And she sets up Doss for another assist and another three. Plenty of threes from the outside in that first. Nine combined threes in the first quarter between both teams. And Asia Doss from deep. And then a nice driving kick action. Her buddy Kelsey Mitchell helping her out here as well. She's on fire. Exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Angry Orchard Hard Cider. Naturally refreshing. And Dr. Scholes. The great Katie Smith was part of that lone Final Four team in 1993. And on Friday, Kelsey Mitchell with a 30-point performance against Stanford just passed Katie Smith for second all-time in Ohio State scoring. That's pretty good company. Decent. Katie Smith was one of the toughest players that I ever had to go through. I mean, she, she had it all. She was intelligent, smart, could read. She was strong. She was athletic in terms of quickness and, and ability to jump. And she had deep, deep range, man. It was a nightmare. They could defend yes. as well. Now, yes. now the head coach of the New York Liberty. Yep, that was on the staff for the last four seasons. Hines Allen with the rebound. Here comes Louisville. Where's 25? Asia Durr just hit her fifth three of this first half. This is Jones with that nice, smooth mid-range game. Mitchell has not scored in this game, but has been a distributor so far. Calhoun off target. Another chance for Ohio State. Mavunga did a whole lot of that on Friday against Stanford. Substitution here for Jeff Walls. How do you defend Kelsey Mitchell? Well, it's really hard. You have to try and build a wall in transition, and I think Louisville's done a pretty good job of it. We're going to take a look at this possession here, and Kelsey Mitchell, and watch how Louisville builds a wall here. Right when she gets into the paint or tries to get in the paint, there's three players. Well, this is how you beat the wall if you're Kelsey Mitchell. Back up dribble, drive and kick, find Doss, open for the three. Been really impressed with the unselfish nature of Kelsey's play here early, Rebecca. Well, Jeff Wall said, you know, this isn't one of those games where you're going to let the star player get hers and then try to guard everybody else. You can't beat Ohio State that way. He said, we've got to get the ball out of Kelsey Mitchell's hands. They've been effective doing that, but then her shooter surround her have been making their shots. Kylie Shook drills one from the outside. Very good three-point shooter at six foot four. Calhoun, no. And it's Louisville ball. Kylie Shook's done a lot of work in the offseason, gained 20 pounds, and, and, and needed to. We, wasn't strong enough, wasn't physical enough to handle. Now, we saw her hit that three, and that's a strength of her game. She likes to be on the outside, but you still, with her size defensively, having a little bit more strength can help her improve as a player. She's added the ability to put the ball on the floor for a pull-up as well. Durr's deep two does not go. Mitchell, still scoreless. 
Carter pulls up on Mitchell. That piece that we saw in the first quarter continues into the second. Nice backdoor by Calhoun. Beautiful feed by the six foot two Michaela Waterman. Yeah, that's what Lene Harper does such a good job of is seeking out and searching out spots behind the defense. Saw that her defender turned her head, cuts baseline, and makes a nice play. At her size, so good and efficient in the paint. Yep. Harper now with six. Mitchell guarding Durr. Waterman with the help. Durr with the recovery. Back to an eight point lead for Louisville. Lavunga. A foul call against Ohio State. Top 10 matchups for us today. Top five matchups for you on Tuesday. Duke and Michigan State, one versus two, followed by Kansas and Kentucky, four versus five, all part of the State Farm Champions Classic on ESPN and the ESPN app Tuesday night. And in between, we'll have the college football playoff rankings reveal as well. Quick play by Dana Evans, Holly. Well, Asia Jura of Louisville already has 17 points. Most of those have come from the outside at three points, but we saw her go inside on her last basket. She said she's been watching a lot of film of Steph Curry and realizing that scorers have to do it in different ways. Your threes aren't always going to be out or be open. And so she's been really trying to watch some tape on how else she can be effective as a scorer this season. Add, look for her to add that to her game this year. So it just helps balance out your attack, Holly, and it, it makes you more of a consistent scorer when you can drive in, get to the free throw line, when you can just present more problems for the defense. And, and you know, Asia's at that point where she's an elite player, and the more she rounds out her game, the more unstoppable that she's going to be. And you breathe right now for Louisville. I love the pressure Evans puts yeah. on the basketball. She gets beat there. Man, she is active. And that was great help again by Kylie Shook, who gets the block and forces it out against Ohio State. That's a really good defensive possession for Jeff Wallace's crew. I'll tell you, it's going to be hard to keep Dana Evans on the bench this year. I mean, the, the way she can impact the game and already seems very comfortable running the team. Freshman from Gary, Indiana. Is a blue collar kid. Her dad Damon works in the steel mill. Her mom Shawanda is a factory worker. And her parents both met while they were playing basketball at South Suburban College in Illinois. Dana Evans comes from really good stock. At 11 points in her collegiate debut. Part of the number four recruiting class for Jeff Walls this season, the McDonald's All American. You know, I think that's one of the things that coaches around the country struggle with, especially with young players, to get them to understand hard work and what that means. And, you know, we get a chance to see a lot of kids through the course of, uh, of, of covering games. And it just seems to be when the parents understand the value of hard work, that that filters down to the kids and those kids get it now they're not perfect they still have to be taught things but they understand that if they do this they will reap the benefit down the road they're not looking for a quick fix that's often the case with freshmen is that coaches have to spend much of their effort teaching them how to compete how to go hard all of the time because in high school you only have to go hard some of the time Durr is back in for Dana Evans Alexa Hart off the bench for Ohio State. Trying to set the screen to free up Mitchell. Calhoun fouled. And she'll go to the free throw line when you come back to Columbus. 10 point Louisville lead. Two blockbuster matchups with the college football playoffs, top 25 in between games. Tuesday night, can't wait for it. Be in Chicago at the United Center for two outstanding games. 
Louisville on top by 10. Asia Durr outscoring Kelsey Mitchell 17 to nothing in the battle of preseason players of the year in their respective conferences. Kelsey Mitchell has been a very solid distributor though thus far. Holly was in the Ohio State huddle. Well, one of the things they were talking about is just being more patient on offense. You know, Louisville is known for throwing a lot of different types of defenses at a team, a lot of junk defense. And Kevin McGuff was saying, look, we've got to attack downhill more. So if you can imagine his whiteboard, he drew a big X across the free throw line of we need to get downhill and really try to break them down inside, attack more aggressively. There's, there's a wall there. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. I mean, it's it's it's. Easy to say in theory, but what Louisville has done an excellent job. They've been very disciplined here in the first half. They're not allowing those drives because everyone is in the paint and they're allowing, they're conceding that pass and that three-point shot from the wing. And no matter what defense they're in, because it looks like they've been in box and one at times, has been in a zone defense. They know the focus on is no matter what. When yep. Mitchell has the ball building the wall. Aisha Hines Allen. Look at look at the two. black shirts. Yep, yep. And look at the eyes of all five players when Kelsey Mitchell has the basketball. Completely locked in on her like she's their man. She's so dynamic. She draws so much attention. And Ohio State oftentimes does so much just to get her the looks that she wants. She's hit a three in 58 straight games. One of the best three point shooters in the country. Hasn't had a whole lot of clean looks yet. And also Louisville shooting an efficient percentage. They're at 50%. So they're not giving Ohio State too many opportunities to get the rebound and run. They're not turning the ball over to giving Ohio State the opportunities to run and therefore get those easier looks. They're, they're able to set up their defense. That is the battle, right, against a good transition team and against a brilliant transition player like Kelsey Mitchell. Your goal is make her play against a set defense every time down. If we can do that, then we just make it that much harder. Bad pass by Furing, and here comes Mitchell. That was Heinz Allen not coming to meet that pass. If she had, it would have been completed. And Dana Evans, the freshman, just drew a double dribble call on Kelsey Mitchell. Mitchell was claiming that Evans made contact with the ball, but it's a turnover. I thought Evans contacted too. Uh, it was hard to tell there. I thought she contacted on the first one. That, that's a good call. But even if so, yeah, she, yeah, she, she gathered she and then gathered, started again. Yes. Yeah, yeah. State extending their defense yep. now, though, trying to create something to get them those easy looks. Foul on the floor as Asia Doss reached it. Well, it's something you talked about at the start of the game the advantage of going against four guards. And Jeff Walls is saying, you know what? Let's put Maisha Hines Island on the black block. Whatever guard is checking her, we're just going to keep going to her and keep going to her and make them have to defend her one on one or bring an extra defender. Carter got the position and the two. And Louisville has extended the lead to its largest at 13. Doss answers again. Her fourth three. But you know, a, a problem that Ohio State has had over the past couple of years is that they haven't been able to outscore people. They haven't been able to get it done on the defensive end of the floor. So here's a game where they're not scoring the way they would like, the way no normally would. They're not getting the stops on this end. Fourth in the country in scoring last year. 313th in scoring defense last year. They're trying to outslug you. Yeah, I see Asia Doss. Waiting for Lene Harper to see her. I mean, she was there. She was open. She's hit. What, how many threes does she already have? Four? Three Knocked four? out four threes already. So should she have risked the defense seeing her by yelling for the basketball? <laughs> no. Do not yell. Kara, Kara's like, no, shh, I'll find you. It's you like can yelling when you're you. playing hide and seek. Yeah. I mean, it's just, <laughs> that's, not, that's not a good move. It is ill-advised, yeah. I think. And that was a great move by Alexa Hart, her second bucket. And here's that Buckeye extension. Nice lead pass from Fearing that time. Good patience so far against this extended pressure by Louisville. I'm noticing Dana Evans 
There's a three second violation is called. Doing a lot of directing. And this is game number two at the collegiate level for her. Yeah, I mean, Jeff Walls is, is, has been thrilled with what he's seen from Dana Evans in, in preseason practice. And we've seen also her ability to impact the game on both ends of the floor. That's another thing that's rare as a freshman to be able to impact the game on a defensive end. And being willing to communicate, to your point, Alan, Adam, to uh, just get out there and talk and direct your upperclassmen. Another deep one from Doss. Back to the post and a traveling violation on Hines Allen. Well, Georgia, the top ranked team, dropped. Notre Dame, the number three team, lost. Wisconsin still unbeaten. Miami still unbeaten. Where does Oklahoma fit in in all this? Nine Eastern on ESPN, the college football playoff top 25 ranking show. So I just found out that I am doing Miami's next game on Saturday against Virginia. So right. Kara, you wanted the turnover chip. <laughs> I will see what can be done. Thank you. Holly, Thank you. That that is that is a clutch. No that is a clutch maneuver by Holly Rowe. By the way, 24 takeaways in the last six games for the Miami Hurricane defense. Incredible stuff. I will rock the turnover chain on our next game. <laughs> I will. Even if I catch flag for it, if it's not a game that the U is playing in. Please, please have your outfit coordinate. Get yeah, some green, green and orange. orange. Yeah. Of course. Well, you know I got I orange. Know you are orange. <laughs> orange. Come on. Come on. Maisha Hines, Allen with the two. Virginia's bowl eligible this year. Good for the Cavaliers this season. 41-31. This has been a really fast-paced, entertaining, offensive-minded first half. Mitchell sets it up again, this time for Harper. And Ohio State seemingly has an answer each time. But this will be a Buckeye foul. It will go against Asia Doss. I believe this is bonus time now in the news. We never got into the bonus in our no, first game, did we? we did not. Not until late. here in Columbus. Got to look at the replay of the Jumbotron, so reacting accordingly, as is in their hearts. <laughs> Doss has to go to the bench. He's been really, really strong on the offensive end. Evans missed both. I believe Hart, though, was last to touch, so Louisville keeps it. Well, we talked earlier about the four guard lineup for Ohio State, and Kevin McGuff has gone with Waterman here, just kind of a, a bigger, more physical press. I think she's done a decent job uh, defending physically in the post and just a little bit more size defensively on that front court for Louisville. Clearly a, a defensive substitution. I was going to say, Rebecca, now we see Waterman and Mavunga, probably their two best sized players on the defensive end together on the floor. Traveling on Evans. for Kylie Shook. And Asia Durr still on the bench for the time being. But her team's still up by seven. She may not see the bench in the second half, but this is a close game, so Jeff Wall's getting her as much rest as possible. Now Waterman gets in the act. Defensive substitution. <laughs> as we were saying. <laughs> Michaela Waterman hit one three all of last year. She knocks one down here to make it a four point game. No good from Hines Allen. You go two for one here if you get one quickly for Ohio State. We'll try it. Mitchell. First point to the game.
Mitchell with her first three of the game. She has shown tremendous patience in this game with all the defensive attention she's gotten. Her teammates loving it on the bench. She has found open shooters, has not forced shots. But when she's trying to go for the two for one, she is looking for it. 14 to two run for Ohio State to get back within one after the lead was as large as 13. Essentially can take it down for the last shot, Louisville. Evans to Hines Allen. Final seconds, and that'll take us to halftime. If you like pace, if you like offense, if you like guard play, if you like explosive stars, we've got a good first half already. Ohio State trailed by 13, a 14 to two run to close the half for the Buckeyes. And they're back within one in the second ever meeting between these two. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Well, Coach, Asia Dirt gets off to a red hot start. Five threes, 17 points, but spends much of that first half on the bench with the two fouls. How did your team change without her on the floor? Well, I thought we did a great job until the last three minutes there. We had some breakdowns on the defensive end, and then we'd done a great job containing Kelsey. You know, you've got to pick your poison. And Asia Doss, I'll give her credit. She stepped up. She's knocked down some big shots. We've just got in our game. We, we, have, we have to figure out a way to keep our star players on the floor. You know, we, we, we've got to let our star players play. And unfortunately, you've got one sit, sitting on the bench. I think a lot a lot of people came here to, to watch play. And, you know, I'm looking forward to going, going back and seeing that uh, foul there for her second call. Not that I'd ever question it because I get in trouble. Okay. But uh, that's just between you and me. <laughs> and our, and our national no, TV audience. It's been a, gr a great ball game. Bo both teams are playing well. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. A subtle jab, perhaps, from Jeff Walls. His star was on the bench with two fouls, but had a dynamic opening half with 17. A one-point game. The halftime report is coming up after this. We'll see which star can enforce their will on the game. Asia Durr saddled with those two fouls, so didn't get to play a ton. And then Kelsey Mitchell saddled with the Louisville defense. I mean, I thought they did a great job of taking the basketball out of her hands. I was really impressed with her poise and patience, though, offensively, because at times in her career, she could have, you know, just tried to force some shots, trying to get hers. She did not do that in the first half. I think she was only one for three, seven assists. She found her open teammates when she got the defensive attention. Good step for her. You guys were talking about Asia Durr. Let's start with her, 17 points before the foul trouble saddled her, but she was hot from downtown. I came out at the start of the game like gangbusters. From beyond the three-point arc, just very comfortable in transition, pulling the trigger. This is a player that is an elite scorer, and I think she's ready to take another step this year in her junior campaign, was terrific in the first 20. Kelsey Mitchell coming down, Kara, what did she face defensively? The wall, and so she was able to find her open teammates, willing to pass them the basketball. Great job drawing the second defender so she could find the open look, and then when they need her to score, you know she can do that as well as, if not better than any other guard in the country. Kelsey Mitchell, those seven assists, just one shy of already tying a career high, and that three-pointer does extend the nation's longest three-point streak to 59 games. Asia Durr has the second longest three-point main streak. She is now sitting at 41 straight games for the three-point make. Good run by the Buckeyes to make it a one-point game at the end of the first half. Rebecca, Jeff Wallace talked about the foul. This is something that we were kind of looking for to see where it was. This was the second foul on Asia Durr. You know, it doesn't look like a whole lot of contact at all. She effectively changes her body trajectory. She does not go, at least with her body, into the shooter. So you can understand why Jeff Walls is frustrated. But his team had the lead at the time, so he could afford, and it was only her second, he could afford to let her stay on the bench for much of that second quarter. Protect the shooter. Protect the shooter. Oh, no. <laughs> Protect the shooter. I was, I was waiting to see if Carol was ready to, to jump on it right there. You think it's fine? I think she tags not her shooting arm, but her off arm. I think she okay, tags you think her she arm. Gets her I think she tags her hand. other arm, yeah. After she went to the bench with I mean, just under five minutes remaining in the half, 
15 to 6 run for Ohio State. You know, though, I bet you were the kind of player in one on one, if you missed a shot, you were calling a foul. <laughs> no. Whether you were uh, hit or not. That's, no. That sounds like no. fight words right there no. between you. you. Man, no, what kind of player do you think I am? Wow. The kind who wanted to win at all costs. <laughs> that's the kind. <laughs> now, if you touch me, when I was shooting, I, I died like a quail. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is that is legit. Yeah, just fell down. Just fell down. If you touch me anyway, I fell down. Adam and Bean, dying quail, loss in Rebecca Pumbo, <laughs> along with Holly Rowe, here at the start of the second half. Top 10 matchup at the site of the women's final four. 138 days away from starting it up here in Columbus, Ohio. And well, we see one of the four teams, maybe multiple teams that we've gotten a chance to see today in the final four. Traveling violation here against Asia Durr. So will it affect your rhythm? Well, sitting out that last you know, six minutes of the second half, now coming, or in the second quarter, now coming to the second half, affect Durr's rhythm, we'll see. Matchup defense here for Louisville. Open is Harper. Her third three of the game. And Ohio State has the lead. This is always an interesting test, I think, for coaches from a game plan perspective. I'm not advocating that Jeff Walsh should change his game plan. But do you at any point start to think about it? If Doss and Harper keep hitting shots, or maybe you don't, because Asian person is going to you as well. Just, I'm, I'm just saying, though, when, when you have a game plan, do you alter it and do you change it in the midst if a team is, is really, really getting, at, getting after it from beyond the arc? And early in the season, it's a little harder, too, because I think generally you play the percentages, right? If a kid's hot, you figure they're going to cool off at some point. Well, you can't just play the percentages from a year ago because you don't know how much better those shooters have become over the course of the offseason. We had coaches tell us, man, thank God that these teams have at least played a game already. At least we have something to base our game plan off of in 2017. Here's Dirk. Good again. Rhythm not affected. No, apparently. <laughs> Asia Dur, the preseason ACC Player of the Year. One of the great scorers in Louisville history. Mitchell over Durham. Good job fronting there by Harper to keep the ball out of Maisha Hines Allen's hands. We saw Louisville try to post up a couple of times in that first half. Utilize some size against what is often a four guard look. A foul on Carter after the Mitchell steal. Okay, this is not quite dying like a quail. All right, this is not, but that's pretty close. <laughs> yeah, a little, little close, a little close. I like it though. That's not a criticism. I'm trying to draw it. You got to just try to draw the foul. You got to sell it. You got to draw the foul. Injured quail. She got it quick. And, yes. I'm also not advocating for quails to die. The quail, I know, that's that's fair. quail people do in not. Ca, in case don't at me on quail, Twitter, man. No quail enthusiasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no no quails that. have been harmed in the making of this broadcast. Don't at me on Twitter with that. I love quails. <laughs> Carter just picked up her third. <laughs> Mitchell, the kick to Harper for two. Another assist to tie a career high for Kelsey Mitchell. And Harper making a count with 14 in this game. How front loaded this press is. All four over half court. And on the attack action, Louisville does a great job of breaking it down. They've gotten that a couple times because they're willing once the ball gets in the paint to still make that extra pass. It's a good game. <laughs> Played in a 16 point window. Three point lead right now for Louisville. Deep one again from Doss. Man, she is not shy. The senior out of Detroit Country Day. Very aggressive.
Aggressive press broken by Louisville and Durr with another quick trigger for three. 25 on seven threes for Asia Durr. Nice shake by Calhoun. Durr around the Furing screen again. Asia Durr already with double figures here in the third quarter. This is just getting buckets by Asia Durr. Wow. 27 points already. Unstoppable. presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Angry Orchard Art Cider, naturally refreshing, and Dr. Scholes. Earlier today, Crystal Dangerfield, a career-high 24 points for the top-ranked Connecticut Huskies as they knocked off 10th-ranked Stanford 78-53 to to open up the season with a win. Stanford falls to 0-2. Stanford lost to this Ohio State team on Friday. The Buckeyes had 28 offensive rebounds in that game. Only one against Louisville so far in this one. And it was Stephanie Mavanka in that game. She had 14 0 boards. Louisville has done an exemplary job keeping Ohio State off of the offensive glass, boxing out, and just ending their defensive possession with the rebound. And Holly Asia Durr still rolling with 27 points for the Louisville Cardinals. Well, that was a big topic of the last time out for Ohio State. Kevin McGuff saying that they needed to do a better job getting under screen but staying attached to her. You know, as they're trying to fight through, not letting that screen to get the defender too far away from her because she only needs a moment to get that shot up. But rebounding was the other topic. Right now, Louisville out rebounding them 26 to 14, kind of doing to them what they did to Stanford just a game go. It was 64 41 in favor of Ohio State against the Cardinal the other night. The Cardinals are doing better. And Kelsey Mitchell starting to heat things up on the offensive end. We'll go to the free throw line. Off the miss, her explosiveness going end to end. She can beat both most people down the floor, even though she's got the ball in their hands and they don't. One of the few transition opportunities we've seen yes. for her, right? Yep. Louisville's done a good job of taking that away. I, this is a treat. We are watching two pros. I mean, Mitchell and Durr and the skills that they've shown today. And I know Mitchell hasn't had her typical scoring day yet. And I say yet because there's still 15 minutes left in the game. But the stuff that she's doing offensively is at this high, high level. I mean, these two young women are going to play basketball for a long time. I like that Mitchell just at a high level, she went over and gave an air high five to where her teammate should have been after she made the free throw. So Mark Mitchell on the bench for Ohio State, watching intently one of the assistant coaches on this Buckeye staff for Kevin McGuff. Durr sizing up Harper and knocking down the long two. A 12-point third quarter for Asia Durr. Foul call here against Ohio State. Asia Durr leading the way tonight. 29 points on 18 shots, 7 of 11 from downtown, and the Cardinals lead by five.
reason, not only is this her alma mater, Ohio State, in this game, but she is here scouting for the New York Liberty because this is one of the top matchups we will see in college basketball this year. Asia Durr, Kelsey Mitchell, and there are so many WNBA coaches in attendance. I have counted five head coaches, a GM, and an assistant coach all here to see this level of talent in this countdown to Columbus matchup. Quite a few at practice yesterday as well. Cheryl Reeve, WNBA champion, Minnesota Lynx was here. So I have stock, Chicago Sky, yeah. Ben Williams from Dallas. They have to wait a year for Asia Durr, but Kelsey Mitchell, one of the top prospects in this class. And for the coaches that scout in, in the offseason during the college season, these types of double headers are few and far between. That's Fred on your left and Amber on your right uh, to get four different teams in yeah. the same venue. So it's not just this matchup. Remember, in UConn, you have Kia Nurse and Gabby Williams that are both seniors. Uh, and so, you know, you, you look at that, you get a chance to knock out quite a few players. Yeah, Brittany McFee. Yeah, Brittany McFee. Yep. A lot of scouts from the NBA side will have the same opportunity that the scouts from the WNBA will have here. Tuesday, State Farm Champions Classic, Duke, Michigan State, Kentucky, Kansas. So you get four top five teams on Tuesday night from the United Center. That's going to be a heavy scout and GM night as well. <laughs> Asia Durr making scouts and coaches salivate right now. Another three. She's got 32 points. We're still in the third quarter. This is still the third quarter. <laughs> this is the third quarter. I'm still using my red pen. Yes. On the interior, working is Mabunga. Haven't had a whole lot of chances down in the paint if you're Stephanie Mavunga in this game. For those who don't know, do you change the color of your pen every quarter? I do change the color of my pen every quarter. <laughs> Nothing made me just sound cool again. It's that moment <laughs> right there. Slick passing, and Sam Furing has got nine points. I just let the game breathe after that comment. <laughs> <laughs> Harper. Good box out by yes. Furing. Turned over by Hines Alley. We'll wrap up your weekend with Sports Center with SVP tonight on ESPN, midnight Eastern Time. We'll have his list of the NFL teams that impressed the most in Week 10. No Ezekiel Elliott for the Dallas Cowboys. Tough test against the Atlanta Falcons today. And then Lewis Riddick will join SVP to break down Tom Brady's performance as the Patriots and their high powered offense go up against one of the better defenses in the NFL, led by Von Miller and the Denver Broncos. It's on Sports Center at night tonight. Carter hassling at the defensive end. And it leads to two for Jasmine Jones. Mitchell, will she force the issue a little bit more now as this lead has gotten up to 12 for Louisville? Extra pass from Waterman. Great look for Calhoun. Durr ahead, could not connect. Kylie Shook just missed. Tough take by Calhoun, and she'll go to the free throw line. Sierra Calhoun, a nice little right to left crossover, and gets bumped as she's going across to, to shoot that layup. Yeah, th this is a this is a hard thing when you're a player that's used to having so much production, as we talked about, and we have complimented Kelsey Mitchell and her approach. And, and you said it, Adam, it feels like it's a little bit maybe danger zone. And how is Ohio State going to score? And that is going to be interesting to watch, I think, as we enter this fourth quarter, if Kelsey Mitchell starts to force some shots over multiple defenders or not. Or do her teammates who have been able to score understand that, all right, what do I need to do to help her get those open looks? Because even if her supporting cast is playing well, she still needs to put the ball in the bucket. 
Well, I actually spoke with Kelsey Mitchell before this game to ask her that very question is what is her focus on this season as being the best version of herself? And she said, you know, in the past when she wasn't scoring and she wasn't doing well, it would really throw her off the game. And so she and her mom yes. and grandma kind of came up with this mantra, turn the page. And so anything that's going on in a game or in the season, she's going to turn the page and go on to the next play and have that next play mentality. But you guys are right, is at what point is she turning the page to become the scorer instead of the facilitator in this game? You know, I think in order to be comfortable with not shooting and not scoring all the time, it is a mental thing, as Holly touched on. But I think you also have to put it into practice. And I think her USA basketball experience this summer with so many other great players, for her to go through a game and realize, you know what, it was okay that I didn't shoot the ball 20 times. We still won. I still was able to contribute. The way I saw her pass the ball, the way I saw her work to defend, all of those things are part of the maturation process. And uh, it's really nice to see from Kelsey Mitchell. She's still a lethal scorer. She's going to have nights where she has Asia Durr like nights uh, this season. She's going to have many of those. But I think she's a much more mature and evolved player in her senior campaign. A family affair. Her dad is the assistant coach, but she's going to her mom and grandma <laughs> to help her come up with her Everybody's getting raise involved, for the yeah. year. That's Absolutely. right. Choppy segment of the game here with a handful of fouls. Michaela Waterman just picked up her second. How about that maneuvering inside by Myesha Hines Allen? It's back up to a 12 point lead for Louisville. An off target pass from Mitchell there. Fourth ranked and defending champion South Carolina getting set to take on 15th ranked Maryland ESPN 2 tomorrow night 7 o'clock Eastern time outstanding test early in the season for Asia Wilson Dawn Staley in South Carolina. Well, not only a new look South Carolina team new look Maryland team as well. They lost a lot of firepower. Tori Walker Kimbrough Brianna Jones graduating some new faces there in College Park they're going to be counted on for some heavy production big good early test for both of those teams South Carolina looked really good in their game on Friday but that was against Alabama State not quite the competition that Maryland will provide Destiny Slocum transfers out in Maryland so another player that they have to replace this season of course Brenda Freeze very close with Jeff Walls Jeff Walls was on staff with Brenda at Minnesota and at Maryland. Part of a national title in 2006 before he took over as the head coach at Louisville. And now Alexa Hart gets tagged with a foul on the offensive end of the floor. That's one place, especially for a big, you better be completely stationary to set that screen because everyone can see you. You're big, first of all. <laughs> you're in the part of the floor where everyone's looking. It's not like you're mixing it up with a few players underneath. Hines Allen really wants the basketball in the post. And she gets it. Good defensive possession by Waterman. This is Mitchell with Evans on her. That'll count for Lene Harper. A much needed bucket and a foul. This is the best I've seen Lene Harper play. I mean, she's really getting after it. Playing solid on the defensive end, but she has been really efficient. Not only hitting threes, but contested mid-range. Well, people that follow women's basketball will remember when Lene Harper came to the University of Kentucky, she couldn't shoot. Yeah. yeah. Her jump shot was, you know, was broke. It was broke. <laughs> like, it was broke. It was broke. And it's not good. No. At the time. And she's worked. She's worked. She's worked. She's worked to extend her range to where now she's comfortable hitting threes. It's just a credit to her desire to continually improve because, I mean, it was it, it was a rope jump shot. And she worked on it to the point of 36 percent from downtown a year ago. So a major improvement for Lene Harper. Durs on the bench now for Louisville. She has three fouls. A little bit of a breather at the end of this third quarter as well. That was my pep talk for Lonzo Ball. 
that was my pep talk for long That's what you told him? No, no, I'm just oh, saying. Oh, I was going to say. I'm yeah, like, no, I didn't tell him. That was like, did you actually say that? Like, no, a broke jump shot can be fixed. It could be fixed. So the release, the positioning of yeah, it. Yeah, everything. I would like to be there for that pep talk, please. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Lonzo, by the Last way. Last night. Another triple-double. Oh, back-to-back -back triple doubles? Back-to-back -back triple doubles. Became the youngest NBA player ever with a triple-double the right. other night, surpassing LeBron, and then, by the way, did it again today. Just See? messing around these first handful of games for the Lakers. I'm optimistic. Just imagine what he can do after his pep talk. <laughs> after, after, he, after he fixes the jump shot after the Carol loss of pep talk. <laughs> Shook. Ooh, it looks Short. like short. Mm -hmm. There's some contact there. The shot clock is off. Mitchell will trigger it and knock it down. He cuts the lead to eight. Carter in the final seconds. It's the freshman Evans getting to the rim. The follow will go. Will it count? Jasmine Jones on the follow. For the time being, they're going to count it. But at the end of the quarter, they'll go to the monitor. Tyna Napier and Mark Zentz will get a look at it. And now they'll wave it out, and after a look that everybody got in the arena on the Jumbotron, that seemingly was the right call. So it remains an eight-point game to the fourth. Ball clearly still in her hands at the end of quarter three. Eight-point lead for Louisville to quarter four. An eight-point lead, Kelsey Mitchell, a big-time bucket at the end of quarter number three. And Ohio State has been really strong at the ends of quarters. And they've done most of this damage when Asia Durr was on the bench, whether for foul trouble or rest. They've really taken advantage when Durr's been off the floor. Yeah, and part of that is if Louisville is unable to score, it makes it easier for, for Ohio State to push the other way, get the pace that they want to get, the shots they want to get. So I like the play call from Kevin McGuff there right out of the, the quarter, right? So just double drag action for Kelsey going toward her left hand. Give her an opportunity to make something happen. And on the offensive rebound, nice effort by Hart. What do we talk about? Offensive rebounding, Ohio State finding other ways to score. And so for, for her to be able to, to get that and uh, get to the free throw line, that's good for the offense. Hart, a defensive stalwart for this Ohio State team uh, has chipped in nicely on the offensive end. Lead is seven. Durr and Evans both out there together. Durr a little bit more off the ball now. The take would not fall for Jasmine Jones. Harper. Furing with the board and Waterman with the foul. That'll be the fourth foul on uh, Michaela Waterman. These two head coaches know each other well. Jeff Walls, Kevin McGuff, both were in college right around the same time or both at schools that played against each other. Good friends, coaching very good teams. Asia Durr, a very good scorer. 34-2 off of her career high. Foul called against Louisville. Right off the inbound, knocks down the three. Let's just go one on one. Let's just, let's <laughs> just clear out. Yes, you clear want out. this to happen? Yes, yes. That's what I want. At least let the post set a screen for him. Be involved somehow. Finds Allen, no. 
Here comes Ohio State. Harper all the way inside, down to four. And Jeff Walls calls timeout. Kelsey Mitchell wasn't forcing the issue early in the game. Now starting to look for her shot. She's hit a couple of threes in the second half. In between games of the Champions Classic on Tuesday, we'll have the new college football playoff rankings. After Duke Michigan State, Reese and the guys will provide the analysis. They'll get the coaches' reactions, and they'll talk with committee chairman Kirby Hoka. And there's going to be a whole lot of movement on these rankings coming up on Tuesday. So find out what the top four, the top six look like. Kelsey Mitchell starting to assert herself offensively as a scorer, 11 in the second half. Asia Durr off target. It's been a fun matchup. Louisville, Ohio State with Durr and Mitchell the headliners. And a whole lot of good stuff from the supporting cast. Adam Amin, Kara Lawson, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe, part of our countdown to Columbus, the site of the women's final four. The knock away by Stephanie Mabunga. Mitchell wants it. It just looks like she wants it. Avanga called for the foul. That elbow got a little bit high against Sam Fearing. And that's four on Mavunga. Well, Fearing's stat line won't be super impressive, but she gets tagged there with Mavunga's elbow. She has played physically. She has kept Ohio State off the offensive glass. She has played assignment defense. She's just, I think, had a really, really solid all-around game this afternoon. Solid's the perfect word. We saw her in that first quarter alone. Draw two charges. Nice feed to Fury. And now she shows up on the offensive end. Back to a six-point lead for Louisville. Looking for Hart, and this may be a foul against Jones, and it will be as she was holding up Alexa Hart. Neither team in the bonus, still seven minutes to play. Waterman will draw the foul on Furing. So it's not what you want if you're Jeff Walls. I mean, now there's seven minutes left in the fourth, and you're, you're in the bonus. Now you're in the bonus. Now you're in the bonus, or Ohio State's in the bonus. Every foul after this one, shooting two free throws for an Ohio State offense that has struggled to find rhythm throughout the game. You know, that for them, when that happens and you're on Ohio State, and if I'm Kelsey Mitchell, Harper Dawes, I'm thinking attack, yeah. attack, attack. And players who, that's part of what they do anyway. A team that was very aggressive getting to the line last year, Ohio State. Fuhring having trouble on the inbound. Mitchell misses, though, and Louisville dodges one. And even off the miss, they get right into their pressure, and Durr is able to maneuver and draw a foul. Yeah, she points to her temple saying, got to be smarter. And she does. You don't want to give Louisville the same advantage that you already have, which is being in the bonus early. Now it's two on Mitchell. Only one more foul to give for Ohio State. What a pass by Jones. Furing lays it in. Mitchell drew all the traffic. Doss misses the three. Durr clears the rebound. Thirty-four for Asia Durr. Pick and roll with Fury. 
And she'll go to the free throw line. Mitchell with her third foul. Louisville has been so good when they have been willing to make the extra pass. You draw the defense kick. Fury wide open, a perfect bullet pass to get it to him before the defense could recover. So now not only solid for Fury, solid in scoring. So, I mean, she might get the upgrade from solid. What, <laughs> what is take, the next take, step after solid? Yeah. Solid platinum. Solid platinum. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like, it like gold. It's like, <laughs> just like airline miles, basically. That's right. <laughs> 11 points, five rebounds, four assists, and some really good, strong defensive play for Sam Fearing in this game. Back up to seven, the lead for Louisville. Mitchell picked up by Durr. Here we go. Pull up three. And Louisville clears. Now it's Durr's turn the other way. Picked up by Doss on the switch. Waterman clears. Jeff Wallace wants the ball in Asia Terry's hand, yep. letting her initiate. We'll go to the free throw line. The rare has been the moment when Durr's been on the floor that she hasn't been controlling the basketball. It's a very short stint when Evans was out there handling and Durr was playing a little bit more off the ball. She's a pro, man. She is. And, you know, she's, she just does some... I don't want to say they're sneaky, but you have to really be paying attention to see, like, the one pass she made a couple possessions ago was a right-handed pass off of a screen, and she's left-handed. Mm -hmm. And it was on target, it was on time. Like, little things like that that might look like, oh, that's just a normal pass, like, that's not. That's a high, that's a high level of skill. Asia Durr is ambidextrous. Writes and eats with her right hand, shoots and leads on the floor with her left hand. Solid platinum. Almost diamond? Um, no, yeah, if yeah. she passes her career high, we'll give her diamond. We'll give her diamond. How about that? Open shot, Carter. Big three for Louisville from Erica Carter. All I gotta say is y'all are some stingy folks with them airline miles. <laughs> <laughs> if 34 points is not diamond, <laughs> oh, she's, who has diamonds? That's all I'm saying. She's first on the upgrade list. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, good night. What does she gotta do? Well, the double came on Calhoun, and a timeout was called by Kevin McGuff. We'll keep it right here with 4.37 to play. Kevin McGuff, 47 years of age. He'll turn 48 three weeks from today. Fifth year since replacing the Hall of Famer Jim Foster. He's on the right side. Jeff Walls, 46 years of age, 11th season at Louisville, the all-time wins leader. We talked about it. Very close relationship for two guys that have really done the work to get up to these high-level programs. Jeff Walls, a father of four. Kevin McGuff, a father of six. And this morning, talking to Jeff Walls, he had his younger daughter on his lap and asked about the birthdays. And at some point, he just looked at her and said, when's your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> so then we're talking to Kevin McGuff afterwards. We see Jeff Walls' family. We're talking to Kevin McGuff, he's a father of six. I said, tell me all your kids' birthdays. He took a long time. <laughs> and poor Lake, the six-year-old, he never remembered when Lake's birthday was. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Today's Kelsey Mitchell's birthday. Her dad's on the sideline. He knows that. Happy birthday, Kelsey Mitchell. Knocking one down to make it a five-point game. Durr 
That's a beautiful touch pass, threading it to Hightown. Doss. Offensive foul on Asia Doss. And guess who's right in the thick of things for Louisville defensively? I thought Harper had a chance to go one more around the perimeter and get somebody a shot. And the pass was late to Doss. Doss drove, and Sam Furing coming up big again on the defensive end. But Furing throws it away here. Mitchell for three. <laughs> Got him right now for Kelsey Mitchell. Well, I've seen it in her eyes the last couple times down the court. I mean, she's hunting shots now, and not in a bad way. Her team needs it, and she has this ability. I mean, look at that challenge by Maisha Hines Island. There's not really much more you can do as a defender, and then just caught late Louisville not challenging her on that one. And man, four minutes left in this one. It's going to be good. The last eight Ohio State points. Along to Kelsey Mitchell. No one got to 2,000 points in NCAA basketball history faster than Kelsey Mitchell. Jackie Stiles, who was the all-time leading scorer until Kelsey Plum overtook her last year, 83 games. It took Kelsey 79. And if you're in that type of company, by the way, with Jackie Styles, you're in some rare air. Durr will come to get it. Durr finding Jones. Rebounded by Mitchell. Ahead to Hart. What a strip by Asia Durr getting back defensively. A beautiful pass by Kelsey Mitchell to her post player running the floor. Asia Durr gets right in there. Oh, yeah, and it's that last left hand by Hart. Basketball Louisville. Nearly a five count. Furing got it in. Three and a half to go in Columbus. Fury, Carter, Durr, Hines Allen, and Jasmine Jones. The five for the Cardinals. Durr. Off target. Jones came flying in and got called for a foul. shaking up after that. I think Kelsey Mitchell has the inside position here. It's hard to see where she gets hit. When she gets hit in the face, I can see that, but it's hard to see where she's contacted. Oh, the left arm. Yeah. And that went over the right shoulder there. Yeah. So that sends Kelsey Mitchell to the free throw strike. No player has hit more three-pointers in Big Ten history. Closing in on Polina Mosqueda Lewis's all-time three-point record. Trying to become the all-time leading scorer in Ohio State history with Jontel Lavender in front of her. Two-point game. 22. A career high, eight assists, five rebounds for Mitchell, and here we go. Turnover, two to tie, three for the lead for the Buckeyes. for the lead.
Louisville takes it right back with high talent. Two minutes to play. A foul called on Asia Durr. That will be her fourth with a minute 50 remaining. Riding a 34-point night for Louisville. It's felt like a heavyweight fight in this one. Hart at the stripe. Carrie, you talked about it when Ohio State got in the bonus early here in the fourth quarter. Looking to get to the hoop, draw the foul. Hart doing that right there. Kind of got bailed out because she was off balance when she put the ball on the floor. Yeah. They've moved Stephanie Mavunga to the front of the bench, so I'm wondering if they're going to, yep, sub her in. Yeah, they're going to bring her in now. Yeah. Although Hart misses both free throws. They're sending two at Durr. So Jones will fire. Rebound snatched by Lene Harper. 85 seconds left. Mitchell's got 14 in the fourth. Mitchell lost it. Good defensive possession by the Cardinals. And Jeff Walls will use one of his two remaining timeouts. Louisville's largest lead in this game has been 14. And every time it felt like it was getting away, Kelsey Mitchell has stepped up in the second half. It was a slow start for her in the first half from scoring. And she had seven assists, though, at the half, getting her teammates involved. Well, you knew that this young lady would not be kept quiet for long in the scoring front. She has been terrific here in the second half of being able to balance playmaking and scoring. And I will say this, I think she's passed the ball as well in this second half as she did in the first half. It's just her teammates were making those three-point shots, and they haven't made them as much here in the second half. And a re real maturity for her. Because when it came time for her to start scoring the ball and looking, and when she made the passes, searching and hunting to get the ball back so she could get her shots up, she's done that. She's had a great balance, great floor game so far here. What would you like to see? Let's start with Louisville. Kara, what would you like to see down the stretch here offensively from the Cardinals? Listen, this is pretty simple. This is not complicated. Yep. You get the ball to Asia Durr, sure. and on the flip side, you get the ball to Kelsey Mitchell. Allow them to create. They're both unselfish, yeah. and they both have the ability to score. So giving them the ball, they're going to make the best play for their team. And their teammates just to have space, give them space and give them room to operate, have your hands up ready to score when they deliver it to you. Back and forth in the waning minutes. Whoever takes this one home, it's gonna be a signature win on their resume going forward this season. Pressure on Carter. Hines Allen, seven to shoot. Hines Allen, denied by Mavunga, one to shoot. Carter will heave, and did a timeout get called? Yes. The final timeout for Jeff Walls was called. There is one second on the shot clock right now. Excellent defense a moment ago by Stephanie Mavunga. Well, not only did she not allow Heinz Allen to drive out or uh, drive past her initially, I mean, she stays down and doesn't foul here. I mean, that was that was a, just a great individual defensive play. And Louisville initially not knowing exactly how much time's left on that shot clock at three seconds, so Jeff Walls uses that last time out. That could be costly, especially now when you can advance the basketball in the last minute. Louisville has 
Lost 10 straight games against top five teams. Knocked off the top ranked Baylor Bears four years ago. As we said, I know it's game two for these two teams, but it's a big time resume builder for both. Whoever gets the win is going to have a good notch on their belt. Illini and Tennessee Martin coming up next. Brad Underwood taking over as the head coach for Illinois this season. Excitement in Champaign. Officials came over to us, let us know that an additional second was put on the shot clock. So two to shoot for Louisville. As Rebecca aptly pointed out, no timeouts. And with the rule change this year, with it allowing to advance the ball into the front court, that's a costly timeout that you had to use if you're Jeff Walsh. Adding that second gives you an opportunity for a dribble as well. To Durham. She'll get it off. And left it short. Ohio State ball, 10.2 the difference. And they're down by one with one timeout remaining. Alexa Hart leaves the floor. Sierra Calhoun comes back in for Kevin McGovern. Hart only a 50% free throw shooter. You got to get her out in this time of the game. Durr is face guarding Mitchell here. And now they'll go back to that matchup. Carter guards Mitchell. It's Calhoun on the drive. Off target. Shot clock is off. Louisville leads. Ohio State has to foul. They'll get it to Hines Allen. Blocked by Mavuka. Eight seconds to go. Here comes Mitchell. Ohio State has a timeout, but a foul is called against Louisville. Two shots for Ohio State with 5.5 to go. Another amazing block by Stephanie Mavunga, but you can't take this shot with the time that's left on the clock. Dribble out, make Ohio State foul you, but instead they foul Mitchell, put up the line. She's perfect at the line so far. She ties the game at 80. So now this is where the lack of a timeout. Yep. With Jeff Walls taking that timeout to salvage that possession with two seconds left. Now you can't advance. You make that pass when, you're, when your player's wide open underneath. But you don't make that pass when it's a one-on-one -on -one and it's going to turn into a tough shot. I'm talking about Louisville on the last offensive possession. Right. I was surprised they were pushing the pace as much as they were with the lead and the shot clock off. Of course, the timeout's assuming it's a make on the second one. It could be basketball live if she misses. For the lead. Missed it! Rebound fought for, it's a jump ball, and the possession arrow belongs to Louisville. Asia Durr has to be helped up by all four of her fellow Cardinals on the floor. Four and a half seconds, a lot of time. You can Plenty. dribble the length of the floor. Absolutely. So let's see if they try to get the ball to Asia Durr. Durr's leg right there. Oh, Furing ended up rolling up on her. We've got two defenders watching Durr. It comes into Evans. Final seconds. Evans lost it. No foul. Time expires. And we head to overtime in Columbus. And Jeff Walls wanted a foul call. Evans drive. He's upset because the official raised her arm as if she was going to call a foul. Then she started going into the traveling motion and then called it all off, saying that there was nothing at all. And Jeff Walls still fired up. Here's the final sequence. Oh, 
Thought there could have been a foul yeah. on Mitchell. You did Hand see Tyna Napier's up. hand go up momentarily. Yeah. And Jeff Walls was livid. Watch yeah. Tyna Napier. She is the underneath official. But right there, the lean in by Mitchell. Yeah, that's a foul. That's a foul. That's a foul. Tyden Napier's hand goes up as if to indicate a foul. Now, by that point, time had expired. Perhaps she felt that time had already expired, didn't want to call a foul because the clock was at triple zeros, or perhaps just didn't want to make the call late in the game. Either way, right or wrong, Jeff Walls was upset about the call. What do they tell us all the time? Disrupting the rhythm, the balance, the speed, or the quickness, right? Mm -hmm. Of the ball handler. Or shooter. And tripping her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a foul. So instead of Dana Evans having a pair of potential game winning free throws, put five on the clock as we hit overtime in a top ten heavyweight slugfest. And Jones for Louisville. And they start overtime with the possession. Mitchell, Doss, Harper, Calhoun, and Mavunga, the five for Ohio State. The same 10 that started this game begin overtime. Carter with a tough shot. Hines Allen with the follow. That was a ridiculous rebound by Maisha Hines Allen. I don't know how she corralled that board and kept her balance and then finished to boot. Well, as we start overtime, let's also remember the foul count. A couple of the principals, Asia Durr and Stephanie Mavunga, both have four personal fouls. Calhoun knocks down a three for the lead. And the team fouls carry over. Into overtime. Both teams are still in the bonus. One additional timeout added for both coaches. Durham. Here comes Mitchell. 26 points. Calhoun again. Allen another rebound. Durr with 34 in this game. She ties her career high and puts Louisville in front. We've had a little bit of everything so far today. And the headliners have played like it. Mitchell in the fury. Offensive foul. Fury takes another charge. Fury has really good awareness too of where the restricted area is and always gets her feet outside of it. I didn't love that. I, I was caught. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thought maybe a little late. Yeah, a little maybe a little. Late. Sure. 50 50 essentially. Here's Durr again. <laughs> when you need a big bucket, who else? Asia Durr with another three, a career high 39. Five quick ones in overtime. The blow by for Lene Harper. What a game. This has been awesome. What a way to start the season. Number five, number nine, second all-time meeting. It has not disappointed. Durr, the step back. Oh, ho, ho! Asia Durr with 41.
We just look behind us at some scouts and coaches. Smiling. A little sparkle in their eyes, I think, right now, too. Extra pass from Doss for Harper. And Durr runs down the rebound. If you're on the road against the number five team in the country, I know this is Ohio State's home gym, but you're on the road, you're in Columbus. Yeah. And you come in here and put up a 40 piece? Are you kidding me? Diamond. I think she's earned it tonight. <laughs> For fifth, and that will send Durr to the line. Mavunga did not score in the second half. She had six rebounds, but she made some key defensive plays late in this game for Ohio State. That's a big loss on the defensive end there. Two monster blocks that she provided, and then. On the offensive end, in the bonus, we mentioned it. Hearts under 50%. That's right. From the free throw line. Meanwhile, Durr, a 78% slinger from the free throw stripe last year. 42 points on 29 shots. Adds on to it here. And Louisville leads by a half dozen with a minute 20 to go. Got nine of the 11 in overtime. Hart, nice post move. No Mavunga, no problem there. traveling with the basketball. A crucial turnover with 34 seconds remaining. Mitchell's got 26, along with a career high eight assists. Deep three. Long rebound. And it was last touched by Ohio State. Louisville takes over with 21.9 to go. And Kevin McGuff will use a timeout. Asia Durr getting it done. Louisville's put up 11 in the extra session. Nine of them belong to Asia. I'm speechless. I've run out of superlatives for what this young woman has done this afternoon. 43 points, and they have not been easy. They have been contested. They have been of the three-point variety in transition. She's she's done it all. Uh, you don't want to say a breakout performance. She's a preseason ACC sure. player of the year. She's an All-American type player, but I, I think she's sh shown that she is on a different level this season. Eye-opening performance without question for people who wasn't sure if she's one of the top five players in the country there, maybe revisiting that right yeah. now. I mean, what a performance by, by this young lady today. Kelsey Mitchell, who has been so good since halftime, but remember late in regulation, with a chance to take the lead, ended up missing a free throw. We were deadlocked at 90. She could have put him in front. Tennessee Martin and Illinois over on ESPN News will get you there as soon as this game is over. Four point Louisville lead in overtime. You have to foul somebody. Durr will head to the strike with a chance to salt this one away. I'm just not sure why they didn't foul Maisha Hines out. Maybe looking for a quick trap and a steal, but then you choose to foul Asia Durr. I'm just a, a little confused by that. You would have loved to foul somebody besides Durr. Hines Allen, to her credit, decent free throw shooter as well, but this is the player with the ice water in her veins right now. 
10 in overtime. And has rhythm at the free throw line. Yep. I mean, sometimes you do want to trap the first pass in and Tight see if you get a steal. Like, yeah. so, so, but I, I just wouldn't foul the player that has 43 and now yeah. 45. <laughs> Say that number again. 45. That is 45. <laughs> Five away from 50. From Asia Turf. <laughs> Calhoun in and out. Cleared by Heinz Allen. And Louisville is going to come on the road into Columbus and make a statement here in November. Valiant effort by Kelsey Mitchell, who fouls out with 26 points, eight assists, a career high, added six rebounds. But this day belongs to Asia Durr. Junior out of Douglasville, Georgia. Athletics in her blood. Her grandfather, Willie Matthews, a baseball player of the Negro Leagues. She started doing crossovers when she was three years old. Basketball in her blood. And 47 on the board in what's going to be an overtime win for the Louisville Cardinals. That'll count for Doss. The final margin is five. Jeff Walls and the Louisville Cardinals with their first win over a top five team in 2013, since 2013, 47 for Asia Durr. What a way to start the season for Rebecca Lobo, Carol Lawson, Holly Rowe, the wonderful women and men of our crew, Adam Amin saying so long from Columbus. Here's Jim Barber in Champaign.